Hi, this is Mrs. Yowd, and today I'm teaching you Algebra 1, Chapter 8, Lesson 6. And today we are going to be comparing linear, exponential, and quadratic functions. If you're following along in your journal, I am not going to be teaching you page 270 and 271. You should be able to do that on your own. So there are two ways to figure out if it, a function is linear, exponential, or quadratic. The first way, of course, is just to look at the graph. A linear function looks like a line. An exponential function, well, it looks like an exponential function. Remember that an exponential function never touches the uh, particular line. In this case, it's the x-axis. And then it continues going up in this direction as well. And it gets exponentially bigger. And lastly, a quadratic function looks like a u-shape or a parabola. Now, we can also find out if it is a, a linear or an exponential or quadratic by looking at the numbers. If you look at the numbers, a linear function has something called first differences are constant for a linear function. An exponential function has a common ratio, and a quadratic function has second differences being constant. And I'll give you an example of that right now. So if we look at this example, we can see that the x numbers are adding 1 each time. And if we look at our y numbers, they are subtracting 3 each time. Since our y numbers are adding or subtracting the same number each time, we can say that the first differences are constant, which means that this is a linear function. In the second example, we notice that the x numbers are changing by adding 1 each time. And our y numbers are multiplying by 3 each time. Since we are multiplying or dividing by a number each time, that is called a common ratio, which means that this example is an exponential function. In our last example, the x's are adding 1 each time. But this time my y values, well, we're subtracting 3, we're subtracting 1, we're adding 1, and we're adding 3. So at first glance, this does not look to be anything. However, if you look at the second differences, so in other words, if we took these red numbers and figured out what their differences are, it would be adding 2, and then adding 2, and then adding 2. Since these are called the second differences, so we found the first differences here, and the second differences are all constant. If the second differences are constant, it's going to be a quadratic function. On the next page, for examples 1 through 4, we need to plot the points and then tell whether the points appear to be a linear, exponential, or quadratic function. When I graph number 1, it looks to be that it is a quadratic function. When I graph the points for number 2, it looks like an exponential function. When I graph the points for number 3, it looks like an exponential function. And when I graph the points for number 4, it looks like a linear function. In exercises 5 and 6, we're supposed to tell whether the table of values represents a linear function, and that would be the first differences would be equal, or an exponential function, which means that it would have a common ratio, or a quadratic, which would mean that the second differences would be equal. So first, the x values are adding 1 each time. And the y values are subtracting 3 each time. Since the first differences are equal, we know that this is a linear function. On number 6, the x values are adding 1 each time. The y values are subtracting 4, subtracting 2, adding 2, 
and adding 4. Let's take a look at the second differences. The second differences are adding 2, adding 4, and adding 2. So the way this is written, it is neither a quadratic, it's not a quadratic, and it's not an exponential, and it's not a linear. It's none of the above. I honestly think they have a mistake in the book on this one. I believe that the 6 should have been an 8 here and here. So let's try this again with those two new values. The y values now are subtracting 6, subtracting 2, adding 2, and adding 6. And the second difference is would be adding 4, adding 4, and adding 4. So if we change the numbers that are the 6s to an 8, then it does turn into a quadratic function. But the way that it was originally written, it was neither, it was none of the above. Okay. In problems 7 and 8, we want to decide whether the data is linear, exponential, or quadratic. And then we want to write the function. So, number 7, let's first look at the x values. If I look at my x values, I am adding 1 each time. Now let's take a look at the y values. The y values are adding 3 each time. That means that this function is a linear function. So now hopefully you remember a linear function is written in the form y equals mx plus b. So remember the slope is the rate of change, the y rate of change over the x rate of change. I found that the y rate of change is 3, the x rate of change is 1 each time we go through. So the slope would be positive 3 over 1. So remember b is where the line crosses the y-axis. This point here is on the y-axis, 0, 2. So that means that the point B, or the y-axis is, or the y-intercept, excuse me, is 2. Okay, so now we know our answer would be y equals m is 3, x, and plus 2, since the y-intercept is 2. Okay, for number 8, let's take a look at our x numbers. Our x numbers are adding 1 each time. Our y numbers are adding 9, and then adding 3, and then subtracting 3, and then subtracting 9. So let's take a look at the second differences here. The second differences are subtracting 6, subtracting 6, and subtracting 6. That means that this is a quadratic function. So now we need to write the equation of this quadratic function. Let's take a look at our points. I notice that I have negative 1, 0, positive 1, 0. Those are my x-intercepts, so that means those are my zeros. So what we could do is use the intercept form that we learned on a previous lesson. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute negative 1 and positive 1 in for my p and my q in my equation since those are my intercepts. Okay, so now I need to find out what a is. So all that's left to do is to substitute any of the extra points that I'm given. I'm going to go ahead and use this point because it has a 0 in it, so I think it'll be easier for me to use. Remember, the 0 is my x and the 3 is my y in my equation. Here are my x's and here's my y. So now I'm just going to substitute in that point. Okay, so now I just need to solve for a. And I got a is equal to negative 3. So now I'm going to plug that into my uh, equation up here for the a up there. And I got y equals negative 3, parentheses x plus 1, parentheses x minus 1. And that would be a fine answer if we needed, if we were allowed to keep it in uh, intercept form. However, if we want to write it in standard form, we do need to multiply this out. And so I got as a final answer, y equals negative 3x squared plus 3.
Okay, and my last question is talking about a ball that is height dropped from a height of 305 feet. This table shows the feet in height of the ball uh, being dropped after t seconds. And so what the question is asking us is, is this a linear, an exponential, or a quadratic function? First of all, I notice that the, the, first, the top is adding 1 each time. And the first differences are written here, so now I'm going to try and see if the second differences are equal. The second differences are, in fact, equal, so that means that this is a quadratic function. Okay, I'm going to do a, another extra example with you. Um, I'm giving you a set of points. Notice that these points are not in order. And so the first thing I want to do is put them in order uh, by their x's. So I see that I have negative 4 and then negative 3, and then I skip to negative 1. That means that there's a point here that's missing that I might want to think about when I'm writing my x, y table. So I have negative 1, 0, and then I skip up to 2. Once again, I'm missing this point here, the 1. So I'm going to go ahead and insert the points that I'm missing when I write my x, y table. Okay, so now I have them in order. You'll notice that I did the points that were missing in red here so that I know that uh, those are not going to have corresponding y values yet. So now I'm going to put in my y values next to the ones that they belong to. Okay, so now I have them in order. So now let's check and see what happens to my x values. I'm adding 1 each time. And for my y values, I am adding 3 each time. But this one's adding 3. Notice that this one is adding 6, and this is adding 3, and then this one is adding 6. Now we would expect that to be doubled because it's doubled up here, right? This is the one that's missing. So if we think about this, if this is a, a nice function here, this looks to be a linear function because this would be should be adding 3 and adding 3, and that works out to adding 6. This would be adding 3 and adding 3, and that works out to adding 6. So that then that means that this is a linear function because the first differences are equal. Okay, I went ahead and found the corresponding y values. The cor this one would be 0, and then this one here would be 9. All right, and that concludes today's lesson, Chapter 8, Lesson 6, which is... Um, comparing linear, exponential, and quadratic functions.